good gaming mouse can be the difference between being the most valuable player or ending up on the wrong side of that final kill cam. But with so many gaming mice out there, which one is best and ultimately which is the one you should be dropping all of that cash on? That's where this video comes in. I wanted to put together a guide for you to help you by showing you the ins and outs of gaming mice as well as give you some recommendations on some of my favourites that may become your best desk companion. But we'll start with what makes a good gaming mouse and what I'm looking for when I'm reviewing them. Really, it's all about accuracy and reliability while still having a very high level of comfort. The main thing that you'll probably see on the spec sheet is the sensor. And they generally come in two flavors, optical or laser. And laser sensors are actually optical sensors, but they use coherent light or lasers for their illumination. And it's a bit up in the air over which one is best. It will depend on a case by case basis, but generally speaking, most people will lean you towards an optical sensor as the best for gaming. The other thing that you've probably seen is DPI or dots per inch. And this is a measure of how sensitive the mouse is. When you move it from left to right, if you have a high DPI, then the cursor will move very quickly. Whereas if you use a low DPI, it will move very slowly. And don't go thinking that a massive DPI makes a mouse better from something that has a lower DPI. It's more about how accurate the sensor is rather than how high the DPI can go. The other thing you've probably heard of is polling rates. And this is a measure of how frequently your mouse will communicate with your computer. So a 1000 Hertz mouse will communicate with your computer 1000 times a second, which in theory will be faster and more responsive than a 500 Hertz mouse. This leads on nicely to wireless mice because now you can get high-end gaming mice that have very similar, if not identical levels of performance as their wired cousins, but are completely wireless. Things like polling rate will have a direct impact on battery life, but you can get mice from Logitech that will rely on induction charging, so you never need to plug it in ever again. Wireless mice are often heavier than their wired counterparts because of course you've got that battery, and you do introduce a few other problems, things like you might get interference or just general dropouts that won't affect you if you're using a wired mouse, but most people would prefer the freedom of a wireless mouse if they can stomach the extra cost. It's not all about performance though, and ergonomics are just as important. You can break it down into three main categories. You've got buttons and the way they're arranged, the shape of the mouse, and then the weight. And the shape and the weight will of course vary depending on the person you are and what you're looking for, how you hold your mouse. As far as button layout goes though, some people will want something that's known as a ambidextrous design so that it's suitable for both left and right-handed users as it's normally symmetrical. Or if you want something specific, maybe you want loads of buttons because you're a MOBA player, maybe you want a sniper button for lining up those headshots. All of these things will vary depending on the model of mouse you go for, so having an idea what you want will help you when you are actually doing your shopping. So I think that's everything you need to know at a glance about gaming mice. As far as my recommendations are concerned, these are all based on the last three or four years of review experience, and I've been doing it professionally for trusted reviews as the peripheral guy for around, I think it's 16, 17 months or so now. But we'll start with budget, because not everyone has loads of money to spend on a high-end gaming mouse. And my favorite at the budget end is currently the Corsair Harpoon. It's a very small, lightweight, nimble mouse. It has a maximum DPI of 6,000 as well, so it should be fine across all monitors. And it just represents great value for money, coming in at around about 30 pounds at the time of filming. It's not absolutely perfect though. It definitely does show weakness when you compare it to the significantly more expensive mice. Definitely in precision movement, so if you're playing a lot of first-person shooters and you're doing a lot of sniping, you might find it's not absolutely perfect. But for the money, I think it definitely is a steal. Moving on to the sort of mouse I would advise looking at if you're just getting into PC gaming and you have a little bit more money to spend, it's the ROG Evolve, because while it's definitely not hitting the headlines for having the absolute best performance and a load of standout features like a load of buttons and things like that, it does come with removable shells, which means that if you're not entirely sure what shape of mouse you like, then you've got four choices out of the box. And I have to say that I didn't like two of the configurations, but one felt amazing in my hand. And I think that most people would have a similar experience. It's a way of finding the best fit for you if you don't know what the best fit for you actually is. 
Moving over to my favourite all-rounder, and one of my favourite all-time performing mice, it's the SteelSeries Rival 310, and I've only recently tested this, it's very new out, it uses their new True Move sensor, which is actually exclusive to SteelSeries, and it's very lightweight, you can throw it around, it's great for flick shots, but it just feels so natural whenever you're using it. I've been playing a lot of Call of Duty and even some Star Wars Battlefront with this mouse recently, and it's been fantastic for first person shooters and because it is so lightweight, I think it's gonna have a lot of appeal. If you're the sort of person that wants a lot of buttons on your mouse, you maybe play a lot of RTS, MOBA games, then you should consider the Scimitar Pro from Corsair. This is a bright RGB mouse. It is on the larger size and it is quite heavy, but it's got a very large bank of buttons and you can assign these to do whatever you like. Media keys, button functions, numbers, macros, you name it, you can pretty much do it. Moving across to a decent first person shooter mouse, it's the Asus Gladius 2. And this mouse, I'd say it still is perhaps a little bit expensive if you get it at its full retail price. Build quality is excellent. You've got a sniper button, which is something I swear by. And the Gladius 2 also has some other things like that removable cable and removable and replaceable switches so that you have just a load of things you can do with your mouse and it's not gonna die on you within the first year or so. If you do have a lot of money to spend on a gaming mouse though and you want the absolute best, then I'm sort of torn between two as I really like the Logitech G900 and then the Razer Lancehead. It's definitely worth noting that as far as the Logitech mice are concerned, there are some even newer mice, but I haven't tested these yet, though stay tuned as they will be coming on the channel. But the G900 is great. It fits my hand very well. It's very ergonomic. It is a bit on the larger side, and as a wireless mouse, it does weigh a fair amount, just under 110 grams. But the performance can't really be faulted here. I just wish that it was maybe slightly better built, as it does feel a little bit flimsy and rough around the edges. The Razer Lancehead, on the other hand, I'd say is better built, and personally, I prefer the design. It's a little bit smaller and fits my hand even better than the G900, though I definitely notice that the range is a little bit reduced versus the G900. So make sure you keep the wireless dongle very close to your desk, as otherwise you might experience dropouts, which would not be acceptable from something from a mouse this expensive. But both of them are fantastic shouts and it's gonna depend more on your personal preference rather than an outright which one is better. But if you do want my recommendation for my absolute favorite gaming mouse, then even after all of these years, it's still the Corsair M65. The current variant, the Corsair M65 Pro RGB, costs around about 55 pounds at the time of filming. It offers removable weights, so if you're not sure what weight you like, you can find out. It's got braided cable, performance is exemplary, it's got that sniper button, and I just find the shape very ergonomic and I just love using it. But obviously it's gonna depend purely on the games you play, your hands, your preferences. So hopefully all of these recommendations have shown you that there are a wide array of choices to choose from and there's not necessarily one right answer. But regardless, I hope it helps you and I'll leave all the links down in the description below if you want to go and check them out further. Let me know what you thought of this video and of course, if you have any specific questions, please leave them down in the comment section below. Like this video if you like it, dislike it if you did not. Subscribe for more guides and other videos just like this. A massive thank you to Asus REG for sponsoring this channel. Obviously they had nothing to do with this particular video. And if you want to see my headset guide that is in a very similar format, you can find that over there. Massive thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.